Kelly plans to appeal his conviction on racketeering charges. His attorney has filed a notice of appeal. R. Kelly hires Bill Cosby's lawyer in quest for freedom. Everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. And so I'm not surprised that he went to Bill Cosby, but for me... She's just one of those individuals that, that would light up a room. She's one of those individuals that down to earth. Embattled singer R. Kelly is enlisting the legal help of Bill Cosby's high-profile attorney. She doesn't really feel like um, Aaliyah, like a big superstar. She always felt like just a beautiful person. R. Kelly's fall from grace was easily one of the most satisfying things we saw in Hollywood recently. After all his sexual abuse allegations, there's no person who'd want to see him leave prison anytime soon. But it looks like Kelly has other plans. Plans of revenge from all the people who left his side. And one of them is P. Diddy. P. Diddy is losing his cool now that Kelly has picked up his guns. What does R. Kelly have against Diddy, and is it enough to destroy the music mogul forever? Let's find out. He feels betrayed by them. While he was imprisoned, none of them stood up for him or offered any support, not even a word of comfort during his time in prison. Diddy, in particular, seems to be in Kelly's crosshairs. Hollywood saw its biggest predator brought to justice after R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison for using his fame to lure young girls into having sexual relationships with him. The gross singer misused his name and position to sleep with underage girls. So many women came forward to recall how Kelly had exploited and actually abused them when they were only teenagers. Of course, he came prepared to fight his case. His lawyer spoke to the media that his sentence was biased and unfair. He said, Like so many Me Too causes, the government was given free reign to make this case about Kelly's life, introducing mountains of other bad act evidence that has nothing to do with the charged offenses. Kelly tried to paint himself as the victim instead. Can you guess what his stance was? That he was a naive, innocent man who had no idea that all these little girls he was sleeping with were in fact minors. His legal team even tried to say that his sexual history had nothing to do with the cases. Details about his sex life and or conduct behavior from former partners or exes of his, accounts of which dove into STDs, sexual preferences, and behavior in the bedroom, were not relevant to the crimes being alleged against him and were simply a way for prosecutors to sway the jury. Kelly was obviously not able to defend himself with these sorts of mindless statements, but he isn't one to sit and face the consequences of his actions or even repent. He is now planning to make a comeback and appeal his 30-year sentence. This time, his arguments are just as nonsensical as the last time. His attorney brought up how the jurors had already known that R. Kelly was a bad person. Hence, they were biased in their decisions. Numerous seated jurors were either familiar with accusations that defendant had a history of sexually abusing underage girls, had previously faced legal problems, and or had seen the highly unflattering docuseries Surviving R. Kelly, in which several government witnesses had appeared. Defense counsel did not move to disqualify jurors who admitted that they had prejudged defendant's guilt or had gathered knowledge about the case from other sources. One of the charges against Kelly were related to the late pop star Aaliyah. Kelly had married Aaliyah when the poor singer was only 15 years old. Kelly was charged for a bribery scheme involving a public official to get a fake ID for Aaliyah so the two could get married while being a minor. Now that Kelly is finally being punished for it, he wants everyone to know about other celebrities who have done the same to young people. Kelly knows his life and career is over, unless he manages to reduce his sentence and win the appeal, and he is ready to go to all lengths to make that happen. Rumors are going around that Kelly is planning on everyone from the industry involved in this to reduce his sentence, and he's planning on starting this from Diddy. Kelly has managed to get himself a high-profile lawyer to make sure he wins the appeal no matter what. He hired none other than the very famous attorney, Jennifer Bonjean. Now, if you haven't heard of Jennifer Bonjean, you'll know what sort of lawyer she is just from the fact that she's defended Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein on their sexual abuse allegations. She even managed to get Bill out of prison. Jennifer is known for finding loopholes in the law to get powerful and dangerous men out of prison. And looks like Kelly is desperate for any loophole that can get him out. I'm not surprised that he went to Bill Cosby, but for me, it looks like Papa did it time, didn't do the time. So let me know what Papa did. Like, tell me the secret. Kelly has a lot of bones to pick from Diddy. Diddy is one of the most powerful men in the industry, and Kelly's 30-year prison sentence is proof that Diddy abandoned him once the situation started to look bad for Kelly. Not just this, Diddy's close friend Jay-Z might have been rather too ambitious to bring Kelly down. 
Turns out Jay-Z was also in line with Aaliyah's admirers. Aaliyah's last boyfriend, Damon Dash, revealed that Jay-Z was crazy about Aaliyah too, back when she was around 18. He recalled, I did not know Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying. He was going hard. Maybe Jay-Z and Diddy both had hard feelings for Kelly because Kelly got to marry Aaliyah and the other two never got to be with her, despite obviously having feelings for her. There are rumors that Jay-Z straight up funded the Surviving R. Kelly documentary, which really cemented the end of Kelly's career. This wasn't the first time the two stars went head to head. Back in 2005, Kelly took Jay-Z to court because after he was pepper sprayed in the face, his former pal Jay-Z showed his gratitude to the attacker by giving him a job at Def Jam Recordings. Jay-Z and Kelly are longtime enemies and Jay-Z and Diddy are as close as they get. It's obvious that Diddy wasn't very sympathetic to Kelly, now that Kelly is no longer relying on Diddy to get him out. He's planning on taking his revenge instead. Everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Diddy has done some unforgivable acts himself, so it won't be very hard for Kelly to bring Diddy to the same conclusion as himself. After all, Diddy is a sexual predator who preys on young artists, including the late singer Aaliyah. Aaliyah wasn't just close to R. Kelly at an age too young. She was involved with some other problematic high-profile men. One of these men was P. Diddy, who you don't even need to be reminded of, is a nightmare for young artists. That man is a predator as big as Kelly, and that's clear from how he treated Aaliyah alone. When she started dating Diddy, and thank God she got away from this man when she did, because it seemed like everybody that come into his life wind up passing away, and it'd be tragic. She's just one of those individuals that, that would light up a room. She's one of those individuals that are very down to earth. On one side, Diddy tried to make his relationship with Aaliyah seem like that of two platonic and innocent friends, and at the same time, he would grind up to her on public platforms. Take a look at this video of the two at an award show. I feel like um, Aaliyah, like a big superstar, she always felt like just a beautiful person, like a special individual that um, whenever you was around her, she treated everybody the same. Even the way he spoke of her at her death made it clear that the two weren't just ordinary friends and that their bond was a lot deeper than Diddy was willing to acknowledge. He talked about her as if she was the sun. She always greeted you with a smile. Her time was coming. She was just about to explode. This isn't the only incident where Diddy was problematic and a straight-up pedophile. In fact, everyone has heard of his relationship with Usher when the R&B singer was only a little kid. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause. But like in the video, Diddy accidentally slipped up and revealed how he and Usher used to sleep together in the same bed when Usher was 10 years old. He tried to cover up the mistake by saying that they play fight, but it's creepy enough that Usher was made to sleep with his mentor in his bed. But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the all for the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early. <laughs> now that Kelly has decided to make Diddy pay back for abandoning him, all of Diddy's crimes are staring him right in the face. And it's safe to say Diddy won't be getting a comfortable night's sleep anytime soon. People are speaking up about how Kelly deserves to be in jail for his crimes. He shouldn't be able to get out of prison after all that he's done to young girls over the decades. One angry Twitter user wrote, we're not obligated to defend and run interference for rich, horrible men just because they're black. R. Kelly preyed on vulnerable starstruck girls for a decade. Bill Cosby slipped pills into women's drinks and with them. These are indefensible acts. Another pointed out how it's about time Diddy also paid for his crimes. He wrote, we all know what R. Kelly did. Now, let me tell y'all, Puffy Diddy was sleeping with Usher when he was only 11. Also, when Justin Bieber was only 15, he got invited to Diddy's house to stay with him for 48 hours. And there is a video of that. They should lock that up right now. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.